She was the fun-loving, easygoing co-host of the hit daytime talk show, The Chew. I actually have one other picture to show you guys. Something else that Are happened. Are you kidding? <laughs> For six seasons, Daphne Oz educated viewers with her smart take on healthy living. I'm Daphne Oz, and I'm going to show you some of my favorite ways to get real food into your day. The eldest daughter of TV's Dr. Oz, Daphne broke onto the food scene after publishing her first book, The Dorm Room Diet, when she was just 20 years old. I took my freshman year, lost 30 pounds, and was like, you know what, my peers need to benefit from this. A decade later, she's an Emmy Award-winning host and a best-selling author with four books on her resume, including her latest, The Happy Cook. Today, Daphne is inviting us into her home to show us what she really cooks for dinner. Hey, I'm Daphne Oz. Welcome to my home. This is our apartment in Manhattan. What I'm going to show you today is how I kind of make sense of all the kitchen gadgets and playtime that I like to have in my kitchen in my home that, uh, that I've had to sort of make work within the confines of our space. Here you'll see that like the majority of my living space is this kitchen island that was so important to me. But, um, you know, for those moments when I want to remind myself that, oh yeah, like, I'm 30 years old and I should be able to have my girlfriends over and have a glass of wine and be a normal human. This table lends itself quite nicely. It's black, sexy marble, I'm sorry. It's like, I'm still obsessed with it even though I never use it. Come bend down for a second. Check these freaking awesome brass rings out. I ordered these from Las Vegas, yes, on eBay. My major contribution to this wine cellar of sorts, wine fridge, um, <laughs> is the shipment of White Girl Rosé. I thought I would make you one of my favorite cheap but cheerful drinks. Not that I'm you know, saying you're a cheap date or something. Prosecco with a floater of Saint-Germain. It's this elderflower liqueur. It's not super sweet. My favorite drink is a tequila soda with lots of lime. I don't like sweet drinks. But if you're just starting the night off and you think that tequila is a little aggressive, this is a great option. Let's drink. Cheers. We actually like created this bar space also to give me room for my cookbooks, of which I have hundreds. I think the reason to own cookbooks is just to be inspired by the way so many different people think about eating and think about cooking. For me, it should be relaxing. It should be exciting and freeing and like a place to totally personalize and make it your own. And the only way you're gonna feel confident doing that is if you see that there are 5,000 different ways to do any particular dish and you have to find the one that is frankly easy and fun for you to make and that your family will actually eat. My mom's Italian, my dad is Turkish, so I grew up with this kind of like motley crew of Me Middle Eastern and Mediterranean food. And I think that really informed the way that I, in my perfect world, would eat every day. Like I want lots of fresh flavors, like lots of fresh herbs. I love to work with nuts and, and dried fruits. My style now is make it simple, make it simply elevated, keep it fun and personalized. That's the whole game. Let's check out my kitchen. Okay, so. This is the Cadillac of coffee makers. I regret to say that I'm at about like a 50% success rate of making delicious coffee out of this machine. My husband, on the other hand, makes masterful coffee. I'll show you my spice cabinet. I'm a spice fanatic. I think it's one of those things that you can so quickly change the flavor of a really basic dish just by adding different spice profiles. Like you can go Mexican with oregano and cumin, um, Indian with coriander and curry. You know, you just, you, you have so much to play with just by having these things at your fingertips. I may be the only culinary person who's a big believer of truffle salt. It gives you $500 worth of truffle flavor for the price of a few lattes, and I use it all the time and I love it. I have all these different little spice blends that I get uh, from a place here in the city called Le Boite. This one is the co oh my god, I don't speak French. Coquelico. Uh, Coquelico. Coquelico. Ooh, it sounds so fresh and so wonderful. It's poppy seeds and lemon for salads, fish, cheese, and desserts. This is just a small sampling of my obsession with like all kinds of different, either homeopathic or or sort of health supportive supplements and different kind of herbs. They really, I feel. I'm not going to tell you how I feel, but I feel good. As you can see, proportionate to the rest of my home, this kitchen island is like ridiculously big, but it's the thing that makes me happiest in this kitchen bar none because it is my prep station. It's also where I lay foods out and I'll just do like family style and I'll let people sit kind of like Bedouin throughout my living room and just relax and have a good time and put their feet up. And that's exactly how I hope to feel when I'm in other people's homes. 
Here are most of the ingredients for this smoky salmon and avocado wedge salad I'll be making in just a few minutes. Not a ton of ingredients, but really about being thoughtful about the ingredients that you pick so that the, the simple meal still feels like a celebration. So I'm going to grab our salmon and I think we should get cooking. Don't you hate when you get a manicure and they don't paint the ends of your nails and you're like, dude, that's part of the nail. That's what I'm thinking here. Don't forget the size of your salmon. They all need a little love. So today we're gonna make the smoky salmon and avocado wedge salad out of my new cookbook, The Happy Cook. This is what it looks like. And you, oh sorry, I didn't mean to give you the middle finger. <laughs> this is what it, <laughs> this is what it looks like. It's really delicious. You're gonna make it at home so you get to taste it too. And here's the deal, I love a good BLT, but I obviously can't eat bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwiches as often as, as, often as I would like to. So this is kind of my like, take on a BLT that's a salad, and it is salmon, it's not bacon, I get it, but it's smoky from paprika, it's got a little bit of sweetness from the maple syrup, and it is a really, really satisfying, delicious salad, because I also pour a homemade, lighter version of a buttermilk ranch dressing all over top of it. Basically what you want is you drop a tablespoon of lemon juice or distilled white vinegar, some kind of mild vinegar, into a, me a cup measure, and then fill it up to the one cup mark with your regular whole milk. And you just wanna let this sit for about 10 minutes. Okay, so first things first is the salmon. I got a wild sockeye. You can check your uh, check this app called the Monterey Bay Aquarium. It'll tell you what the most sustainable fish you can buy is. All meat with any protein, take it out about 20 minutes before you're ready to cook so it comes to basically room temperature so that you get a really nice even cook and it cooks a little bit faster too, which is great. And now I'm gonna make this quick paprika spice blend that I put on top. As you can see, in my own home kitchen, I really don't measure that frequently, which was part of what was fun and challenging about writing all my recipes down was really coming to terms with the fact that like, what I think of as a little pinch is actually, you know, a half a teaspoon of salt. The way that I like to cook at home, it's, it's not making a huge mess. It's not, it's using as few ingredients as possible, using as few utensils as possible, but delivering max results. This is how I grew up eating. Like you are not gonna sacrifice anything just because you wanna take good care of your body. And I'm gonna eat a meal like this that feels just a little bit decadent but mostly healthy, specifically so that I can go chow down on a piece of chocolate cake after dinner. Obviously we have our buttermilk that we made before and you can see it's just sort of thickened up a little bit from that lemon juice that I added. And I'm gonna use about three tablespoons of creme fraiche. You can totally make this with Greek yogurt. I've done it a million times. Um, you just want something like a little bit thicker and tangy for the dairy base. So now here's where I go wild. It's all about the herbs for me in this dressing. I use a blend of parsley, tarragon, and chives. Equally important as the perfect blend of lemon or vinegar in with the creamy dressing is gonna be enough salt and enough pepper to really carry it over. Now, remember when things are really cold, like on salad dressings, ice cream, or really hot, you can't taste it that well. So you go a little bit heavier on the salt um, in a salad dressing to make sure that once it gets on the lettuce, you're still tasting plenty of it. And then tons of cracked black pepper. This dressing relies on it. It's what keeps it really exciting and interesting and not just your basic, you know, out of a bottle ranch dressing. Mm. Oh my gosh, it's really good. I think our salmon is ready to check on. Oh yes, oh, check this out. So at this point, your salmon's about halfway done. You can test it by going to the thickest points. They should be pretty firm when you go to touch them. Take a little bit of maple syrup, about a teaspoon for each filet, and just take, you could definitely use your fingers if you're not worried about the heat, but I'm just gonna use my little pastry brush and quickly brush this maple syrup to give this amazing, sweet, sticky glaze on top of the salmon. You can scoop up some of that oil, give it a little baste, Watch your white shirt that I should never cook in. Oh, I never learn, I never freaking learn. Okay, you know what works really well? Dish soap, it's so crazy. Get those sides too. Don't you hate when you get a manicure and they don't paint the ends of your nails and you're like, dude, that's part of the nail. That's what I'm thinking here. Don't forget the sides of your salmon. They all need a little love. Okay, back into the oven for another like three to four minutes. First things first, I'm just gonna jam on these little cherry tomatoes. 
and you're just gonna slice down in half and then slice it into quarters to give you that great wedge salad effect and arrange it on your plate like so. And then I like to have some avocado with my salmon. It gives you some nice healthy fats, good for hair, skin, and nails. I think our salmon is ready, I'm gonna grab it. It's really good. It's really a lovely presentation if you just sort of flake it like this. It also helps it soak up some of the juice that's still on the cooking sheet, your baking sheet. See how it's just slightly translucent still in the center here? But it's warm, that's the perfect way you want the salmon done. And now grab this awesome herby buttermilk dressing that you made and just go to town. I like to finish almost every savory meal with a little sprinkle of sea salt on top. Alternatively, you can put the dressing down first and let your salmon kind of soak into that. Come to mama. But let's be real, you could put this dressing on cardboard and it would be delicious. So I think you have to make it and try for yourself and let me know what you think. <laughs>